Rub up your engines! Yes, the world is a strange place indeed. A Massachusetts gas station owner has stopped selling fuel because he's irate at having to charge so much to people. He's a regular guy. He says, I don't want to be part of it anymore, and he's not selling fuel anymore. Brands Mobile Service in Amherst, Massachusetts drained its fuel tank. He says, I don't want to be part of it anymore. This is the biggest ripoff that has ever happened to people in my lifetime. He says he's still going to do oil changes and repairs, but he's not going to be selling gasoline because he doesn't want to be part of this gigantic ripoff. And here's the hilarious thing. The press contacted this woman, Julie King, who's a spokesman for Exxon Mobil, and here's what she said about the price of gas. You can't help but laugh. I quote, the price at the pump is out of our company's control and is based on several factors, including the price of crude. Okay, it's out of their control. They're the people to take it out of the ground and then send it and then mark it up and make a profit. Yeah, it's out of their control. I mean, their response is out of control, just bureaucratic BS. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of our control. It's just our business, but hey, it's out of our control. We just run a business selling it, getting it out of the ground, turning it to gasoline, selling to you, but it's out of our control. We can't do anything about it. <laughs> I just find it amusing that now all these oil companies are using women as their spokesmen because I guess they feel people believe women more, that they're more trustworthy, so now they're all spilling the crap that men used to spill out now. <laughs> Sad that we got to pay so much for gas, but there is some comedy in it that these oil companies throw this crap in our face and think we're going to believe it. Yeah, they'll fall for anything, those fools, the public. What do they know? We'll just tell them, hey, we got no control of it. We're just an oil company that digs it out of the ground, takes it out of the ocean, turns it into gasoline, brings it to you, and then marks the price up as high as we want to. Acura Tom says, I got 2002 Acura TL with problems after my transmission was replaced. I know the transmissions are weak. Mine was slipping, so I took it mechanic. He had a transmission from a 2005 Type S that he could grab and rebuild, which would be faster. So he did that. Now when I drive it, it shakes or shudders when I'm hitting about 30 miles an hour. What can I do? He got ripped off by the mechanic. He's saying, I got another one that, that I'll rebuild and put in. I can just about guarantee he probably just put a junkyard one in, right? And it's what, 2005? So it's 18-year-old transmission to begin with. Either that or he tried to rebuild it and he did a crappy job. Acura and Honda automatic transmissions are very complex transmissions. The only people that should rebuild them are experts. Now, there's a few guys in the United States that really do a good job. They have companies, that's all they do is Honda and Acura transmissions. You got to use a company like that. They know what they're doing. They're experts. You can't have some clown in a garage say, well, I got this transmission here from a different one and I'll rebuild it and put it in yours because I don't have time to take yours apart. So I'll rebuild this and when I'm done, I'll call you. One, it's probably didn't rebuild it. Or two, if he did, he didn't do it right. You get shuddering at a certain speed. That's in the transmission. The guy screwed up. Of course, he's not going to stand behind it. I don't know what you paid him. Maybe he gave you a fantastic deal and didn't charge you much. In which case, buyer beware. If you find that a real tranny like that's going to cost you four to six grand to have the job done, and he did it for fifteen hundred, I guarantee you he didn't do it right because the parts would cost more than that. So I go to the guy and say, "Look, you screwed up. Just give me my money back. I'll go someplace else." Unless he's saying, "I'll try to fix it." And if he does, you'll probably find you go back. And back and back and back, and it'll never be fixed, right? Because if he didn't fix it right the first time, what's to say he's going to do a better job the next time? Maybe he'll look for another used one and try that and hope, oh, maybe this used one will work. But you got screwed over. Larsall says, How much movement is too much movement? I got a 2010 Acura. When I shift into drive reverse, I feel a slight jerk. I checked the mounts. They seem okay. Transmission fluid was replaced at Honda a few months back. I have new front CV shafts that idle smooth. It just clunks when I put it in gear. Well, you've done the logical things. It could be a worn drive shaft. You put it in clunk, but you've replaced them and it's still the same. You have some wear inside the transmission. That's pretty typical for an Acura. You see you got like 196,000 miles on it. It's a lot of miles. I would personally just live with it. You're going to find age they wear a little, and then when you put them in gear from starting them cold, they clunk. Now, when they warm up, a lot of times they don't clunk because, think of it, what does metal do? When it gets hot, it expands a little bit. When it's cold, it shrinks a little bit. And that little bit only has to be a thousandth of an inch that'll clunk when you put it in gear, but then when it's warm, it doesn't clunk. I personally would just live with it. You change the fluid, you change the shafts. That's what's doing the clunk, and it's just internal to the transmission. And it's something that you'd live with if it shifts okay. Hey, 196,000 miles. 
and the weakest thing in those anchors are their automatic transmissions. It still shifts good otherwise. Just baby it, you know? Maybe if you don't like the clunk and warm it up for four or five minutes before you put it in gear. And if the clunk and goes away, that little clunk isn't going to hurt anything. I've had people with anchors have them clunk like that for four or five years. They're still driving them down the road. Jerome says, should I flush my coolant or just drain and refill? I got a 2013 Toyota Sienna, 80,000 miles. Should I flush it or drain and fill is good enough? Drain and fill is good enough in Toyota because they use excellent coolant that can last more than seven years, 150,000 miles, can last a really long time. What I advise is warm the car up first, warm it up, get a big fan, put it in front of the car. Once it's cool enough, take the radiator cap off, drain it, and open the petcock. Most of the stuff will come out except for a little bit in the block. If you want to really get it all out, you could take the thermostat out, and get a hose and blow it out. You could go that far if you want it. Most people don't bother because the Toyota coolant lasts so long, a little dilution isn't really going to hurt it. You don't need to use chemicals to flush it or anything. If you do it warm, you'll get most of the coolant out and that'll be pretty good. If you want to make it perfect, you need to remove the thermostat and then blow it out of the engine so there's nothing in it and then fill it back up again. Thank you, boy 99 says, how can I remove rounded alternator bracket Allen bolts? I'm removing a timing chain and guys, but I can't get the alternator bracket. The Allen bolts are rounded off and I can't get an Allen wrench. Help. You got a German car, that's a problem. Instead of using regular bolts like everybody else, the idiots have to use Allen heads where they're recessed. And when they strip, they are absolute stinkers. Because if they're bolts and are rounded off, they make special sockets that fit in that have reverse thread. And when you turn them out, the teeth grab in and pull it out, right? But you got an internal Allen one that's stripped. It's one of the dumbest designs on earth. And unfortunately, you're kind of screwed there. What? I do, and if you know any good mechanics, we have to drill it out a little to make a bigger hole. Then we get a bolt with a hex head, stick it in that hole and we weld it on that hole. Then we put a wrench on the bolt and it will come out. That's about your only option because once that stupid Allen key is rounded out inside, there's nothing to grab. It's internal, it's not external. It's a stupid design. The Germans were the first ones to really go whole hog with it because of course they could and if they could, they will. Whether it makes sense or not, it looks better. It's neater than those ugly bolts. It's a nice little hole with an Allen, right? First car ever was an Opal Cadet and I'll tell you it drove me nuts because it was up in Niagara Falls so in New York it's rust and snow salt in the winter and everything and when those things went it drove me bananas and I thought why did these stupid Germans put this crap on their cars when nuts and bolts work perfectly fine so you're gonna have to get something to weld it in and get it out or you're gonna have to take every bracket apart to get to it like your alternators on the bracket well maybe you're gonna have to take the entire bracket assembly off with the alternator on it and then take it off and maybe heat it with a torch and try to cut it and drill it and get it out. That's about the only option that you have is to weld the piece on and then have it pulled off because there's nothing inside there. And knowing those Allen heads, if you try to drill a hole in it and put one of those easy outs, it'll just break off because those Allen heads aren't that big. You drill a bigger hole in them. They're so fractious when you put an easy out, it'll just snap off most of the time. Why do you think it's bad here and pollution is worse in India? India's trying to get rid of the old clunkers by saying cars get older, they'll get rid of them. But of course, now they're facing back Let's face it, people in India don't have that much money. There's a lot of poor people there, right? And they're saying, well, that's not fair just because they say our vehicle's old, we got to get rid of it. They're saying how many miles versus not just age. And of course, it gets so complicated. And it's not just miles, it's the vehicle. You might have a Toyota with 250,000 miles that still runs fine. You might have a Chrysler that's got 60,000 miles that runs like crap. So when you start getting government regulations involved and stuff, the rats' nests come out. And from what I know about India, the bureaucracy there is insanity itself. You can imagine the mess that would make if they try to start banning things. They recently put a law in India that vehicles that are more than 20 years old, that are personal vehicles, and 15 years of commercial have to do a test to see if they pollute. Yeah, I mean, they were doing that test in the United States, and a lot of the states have been doing it for quite some time. <laughs> and it's not the old ones they test, they test them all. And they made a law that if your vehicle's more than 15 years old, you have to spend eight more times than you did before to renew your registration. Here we had a poor country, right? And they're taxing the poor. The people that can afford it the least are getting taxed the most. Boy, there's reverse taxation for you. In their case, it's not tax the rich, it's tax the poor. And different from other parts of Asia, like China, that's pushing electrification, there's hardly any charges. 
stations in India, their electrification's got a long way to go. Now, in India, interesting enough, many places they don't have any kind of certification. You buy a car, you drive it around. They have all kinds of accidents from clunkers, too, from what I've read. Hey, let's face it, if you don't have much money, what are you going to do? Fix your brakes or get food for your family, huh? They want to do a reverse cash for clunkers. There you got a clunker, they just want you to get rid of it. Or if you don't, get rid of it, they tax you more. Sort of like they take the cash for your clunker and you drive it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.